In this video, we're going to be talking about the mechanism of how we attain similar emotional psychological states to our ancestors and how this manifests in a modern consumerist culture. The behavior of eating, playing games, trading stocks, or whatever is secondary. The mechanism is kind of obvious when you think about it, is to seek the same neurotransmitters, endocrine system, and hormones that our ancestors experienced in what was obviously, but we don't think about it, a radically different environment. Homo sapiens evolved during long periods of time on the savannas of Africa. There were dangers and often privation. We evolved amidst scarcity. Okay, let's take a look at dopamine. Both in Homo sapiens and pre-hominid times, neural machinery that would have noticed things that were different, a flash of color, movement in the bushes, and called the brain's attention to it. Hey, what's that? Be careful. Or, it's food, finally, would have been adaptive. Dopamine is a chemical messenger in your brain. It's considered one of the happy neurotransmitters, along with oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. Dopamine is a multi-purpose molecule. It helps to initiate movement, and when cells from this part of the brain die, it results in Parkinson's disease. Dopamine is also associated with the wanting, in the brain's reward centers. It's released in anticipation of a reward, whether that be a fresh slice of pizza, a favorite song, or the unexpected attention from a high status or attractive person. Wait, but didn't you just say there were a whole bunch of neuro whatevers? How come we're only talking about one? Can it really be that important? Yes, there are a lot of neurotransmitters, but dopamine is an extremely relevant one to our modern cultural predicament as it causes seeking behavior that results in consumption. Check out this example. Parkinson's disease is when you don't have enough dopamine in the area of the brain that initiates movement. So people with that disease are given a drug called L-DOPA in the form of Mirapex, which floods the whole brain with extra dopamine. It does solve the Parkinson's symptoms, but what they found were lots of patients reporting bizarre symptoms a church pastor had 15 extramarital affairs. A little old lady uh, lost her life savings gambling at a casino. Other people were buying tens of thousands of dollars worth of shoes and other things. It resulted in massive consumptive behavior as a byproduct of the excess dopamine to solve the Parkinson's symptoms. Okay, let's unpack what's going on here. A famous neuroscience study had thirsty monkeys listen to a musical tone and then do some work. Then at the end they would get a fruit juice reward. Knowing a bit about dopamine and its historical importance to animal and human evolved behavior, when do you think that functional MRI machine would have measured the spike in the monkey's dopamine? When the monkey got the fruit juice, right? No, the spike came not when the reward happened, but when the monkey recognized the signal to do the work. That dopamine spurt enabled the monkey to do some task press a lever or such, and then get the reward. By the time the juice came around, the dopamine had already receded. I summarize this dynamic as the wanting feeling stronger than the having. We don't get this feel-good burst of dopamine when we buy something, but when we deliberate over buying it and decide to go to the store to buy it. At the moment of the reward, the dopamine is already peaked, and then... Pretty soon, we're going to need to pursue some other, usually consumptive, behavior to get that dopamine burst again. This is super counterintuitive, but also super important. Think about the implications. Okay, so in ancestral times, this dopamine reward pathway would have been absolutely adaptive when all of our consumption was calories in our own body. In a culture where we eat a hundred times more energy and calories from outside our bodies than inside via products and stuff, this dopamine mechanism in modern humans results in some odd outcomes. We are living in a society that is chock full of a really potent form of stimulus called supernormal stimuli that hijacks the dopamine mechanism way beyond its evolutionary purpose. Please pause this video now and check out the short comic linked above for a great description of how this works. But I'll give a quick summary. 
Mama birds, when feeding their young, respond to evolutionary cues of large and red because that behavior increased the chances that some babies would survive. So when scientists put a fake baby bird in the nest made out of popsicle sticks and painted it red, the mama bird would then preferentially give worms and grubs to the popsicle stick and not feed her own babies. Red and large were purposely accentuated by scientists to redirect behavior in a novel animal environment. I'm sure you can all begin to imagine some of the large red popsicle equivalents in our modern culture. Humans, as animals, are just as susceptible to these supernormal stimuli. Some examples of the potent stimuli include Instagram, Facebook, pornography, drugs, money, that's for another video, and all-you-can-eat buffets. When you're playing and winning Fortnite, your brain thinks you just bagged an antelope or out-conquested a hostile neighboring tribe. It doesn't know you're sitting on a couch in a big house accessing coal and natural gas-fired internet servers somewhere. In a world where we have access to goods and services that kings and queens from a few centuries ago couldn't have dreamed of, this wanting feeling stronger than the having is why our houses and my storage unit, shown here, are chock full of stuff that we hardly use or appreciate. You're only 19, so are unlikely to have a storage unit full of crap yet, but this is evidence of the ghost of dopamine past. Each of those purchases was exciting and motivating at the time, but I quickly sought and found another way to get my daily dopamine hits, some good, some bad. So this is point number one. The wanting is stronger than the having. We get a signal, then we get dopamine, and then we get a reward. No dopamine when we get the reward. There's another key aspect to the mechanics of dopamine in our minds, and that is one of habituation. We've long known dopamine neurons are critical for reinforcing behavior. When another study had thirsty monkeys sit quietly and listen for a tone, which was followed by a squirt of fruit juice into their mouths. After a period of fixed, steady amount of juice, the amount of juice was doubled without warning. The rate of neuron firing went from 3 per second to 80 per second. Whoa, this is great. I didn't expect double the amount of juice. It tastes wonderful. But as this new magnitude of reward was repeated, the dopamine firing rate declined. The monkeys had come to expect this higher baseline of juice. They had habituated to the exercise. Even though they still got the juice, they now expected to get the juice. So their dopamine did not fire as high as the first time. Eventually, even with a high amount of juice, the dopamine neurons returned to the baseline rate of 3 per second. We quickly become habituated to expected rewards. We notice and respond to unexpected rewards, which, like our ancestors looking for a flash of color in the bushes or some unexpected danger, was adaptive. Well, you might rightly say, I'm not a monkey and I don't like orange juice. How does this relate to me, my consumption, and our society's consumption? Let's take a look in part two of this video.